We don't do it for the money. We don't do it for the fame. We teach because we want to turn children on to the magic of learning and make a positive impact that sets each child on a lifelong path of success and happiness. But many of us are not adequately protecting our students from the very thing that can destroy all of our efforts, bullying. Bullying is a direct attack on a student's sense of belonging and core identity. It often results in low self-esteem, shame, anxiety, aggression, and depression. The majority of bullying takes place at school, and when the school campus becomes a place where kids are marginalized, no one feels safe. Because of bullying, children become reluctant to go to school. Many dread the physical and verbal aggression of their peers, and many more attend school in a chronic state of anxiety and depression. Some stop showing up at all. In the most extreme cases, targets of bullying have taken out their anger and despair through school shootings or by committing suicide. But more commonly, researchers say the psychological sting of frequent bullying has effects that can extend many years into adulthood, decades after the initial bullying. A 2014 study published in the American Journal of Psychiatry shows those who were bullied in childhood had lower levels of education, greater physical and cognitive health problems, and poor social functioning throughout their lives compared to those who were not bullied. As teachers, we frequently witness and hear about instances of bullying among our students. In these cases, we're legally responsible to intervene to ensure children are physically and psychologically safe at our schools. But we must ask ourselves, are we really meeting our responsibility to keep kids safe? For every instance of bullying we respond to, we know there are many more we never catch. Many children don't tell anyone they've been bullied. As long as we wait to see it, or for children to bring it to our attention, nothing much will change in our schools. It's up to us as teachers, not them, to put an end to this ongoing threat at our schools. Kids simply cannot learn if they feel unsafe, anxious, or defensive at school, and we owe it to ourselves if we want to make a difference in children's lives to do more than our part and work to prevent bullying before it happens. Simply teaching a lesson about bullying and having a zero tolerance policy is not enough. Effective bullying prevention requires an integrated school-wide effort where we all commit to this trifecta of measures. Intervention, research, and action to change the school culture and climate that supports bullying. Here are three ways we can work together to become more proactive and focus on both prevention and response. First, instill an anti-bullying mindset. It's never too early or too late to teach students about responsible behavior. We must do more to help kids learn that being critical, judgmental, making hurtful jokes and spreading rumors is unhealthy, unacceptable, and constitutes bullying. And we must continually communicate our high expectations for their actions. Our kids watch us closely, so be a good role model. Be firm but respectful when implementing consequences, not disparaging or belittling. If you say mean things or ostracize others, even to colleagues, then the young people around you may imitate those behaviors. We also have to spend time every day talking to our students about more than schoolwork. And when they're talking, we must listen, make eye contact, and ask questions. When kids have an open and comfortable relationship with teachers, they're more likely to feel at ease and report bullying. Second, we have to create opportunities for friendship. We can help students establish connections with their peers by assigning group projects, giving partner responsibilities in the classroom, and pairing students up to design and lead discussions, lessons, and all class projects. Not only do friendships help prevent bullying, but they also improve students' self-esteem, health, and even academics. So we must do all we can to help them develop solid friendships, especially those students who seem the most vulnerable and isolated. We must teach kindness, caring, and giving, and encourage students to reach out to others and help those who need it. By stressing the importance of empathy and looking for situations where we can help students learn to see another person's point of view, we teach kids to recognize how the victim of bullying might feel. 
Children who are empathetic not only tend to make friends more easily, but they also make good friends themselves because they can relate to the feelings of others. Last but not least, empower your students to be resilient upstanders. Brainstorm ideas on how to navigate and make the most of social situations that might be uncomfortable, stressful, or challenging, and have students define resilience in their own terms. Role play and discuss how to manage strong emotions like anger, frustration, embarrassment, and loneliness. There are many ways to teach these valuable coping skills and also integrate history and social studies content. Give kids the insight and inspiration for dealing with bullying. Talk to them about choices and friends and healthy relationships and give them ideas about how to address a situation if they find themselves with someone who isn't a good friend or is treating someone else badly. Research shows that most children feel powerless when they are being bullied and when they see another person being bullied. Equip them with the tools and good choices on how to handle these difficult situations like walking away, telling an adult, or telling the bully in a firm voice to stop. Teach your students to use their resistance skills when encouraged to join in on bullying and be an egger or a bystander. Empower students to show their good character and be upstanders when they see bullying by speaking up and reporting it. Help them recognize that keeping silent only makes the situation worse for everyone involved, including them. And if more kids show disapproval for bullying behavior, it will decrease. Our powerful role as teachers is to prepare students for the future. By taking the additional proactive steps to prevent bullying, our students will develop their academic skills in a truly safe place, and they will learn to be more responsible, respectful, and resilient individuals who enjoy the sunshine when it's around and dance in the rain when there's no other choice.